so the next phylum that we are going to look at from the kingdom animalia is phylum platyhelminthes uh, this literally translate to the all the flat worms that we know of and flat worms because they are literally flat right so that is the uh, one of the characteristics so dorso ventrally flat and body dorso ventrally uh, does anyone know this word dorso means dorsal side which is back side ventral that is front side so like if we speak about the human being the front side that is the chest side is our ventral side and the back is the dorsal side so dorso ventrally flat and means from both sides these flat worms they have flat body and they have bilateral symmetry bilateral means they can be separated into two half centrally right uh, that is the bilateral symmetry like human body also has bilateral symmetry that means if you chop someone from the center not chop but if you draw a line from the center it creates half half equal parts so that is bilateral symmetry they are complex and they have differentiated body structures earlier categories if you remember for example the cilantherata they were differentiated only into two ends that is the tentacles or the head and the tail region right right but in this case platyhelminthes they are well differentiated body structures and they are relatively complex like i have been saying it always that the complexity over the uh, categories that we are seeing is increasing tissues are differentiated from three layers what is called as triploblastic Uh, i guess some time back i had mentioned this endoderm mesoderm and ectoderm while the embryo is formed from the zygote it differentiates into three layers so that's why it is called as triploblastic that means whole of the organism while it is developed from a zygote or embryo it is developed from three different layers that is triploblastic similarly there are diploblastic organisms as well that means during their embryonic development they have developed from two layers and they are relatively simpler so for example again these organisms uh, uh, from cilantherata that is jellyfish and so on these are diploblastic because they have only head and tail like a portion right uh, that is the upper region uh, like you can see in the jellyfish and the lower region that is the tail portion not tail lit in literal sense but the two half of the body so that is diploblastic organism while the platyhelminthes these are the triploblastic they do not have true internal cavity or what is called as coelom right internal cavity within the body is called as coelom so these organism they are completely filled and they do not have uh, any true internal cavity they are either free living like for example planaria or parasitic like liver flukes so this is a typical example of the uh, flat worm that you can see that's the planaria uh, species and this is the kind of tapeworm that you know commonly uh, i'm assuming that everyone would know tapeworm and there are various kind of infection that they can cause especially in the intestine or even the eye infection if you want you can just google the images tapeworm infection you will find like really creepy pictures uh, because uh, they look very bad otherwise uh, but those uh, people who suffer because of this infection they are also undergo quite a lot of pain because of this tapeworm infection because they are like most of these they are parasitic and the moment they are parasitic that means they are going to eat up lot of nutrition and they grow very fast so that way this platyhelminthes category can cause infection uh, to human and that the oh. yes a tapeworm in the intestine the only way to remove it is to like uh, when it is very big is to operate it right correct surgical removal so if you want me to show you uh tapeworm infection you can see this right yeah it's not that bad uh yeah so all these these are actually the tapeworms 
like you can see them <coughs> quite a few the worst even this kind of infection most of these are usually the take worm infection right can even go to the brain right it can e i doubt that uh, but there is a chance especially if i show you the eye infection you can see you can see here this is the kind of take worm yeah it's growing it's not bad. how did they they see this is it with an eggs go in no sir like when you don't cut your nails and all that correct correct so uh, or even the smaller young animals uh, like young tape worms they can uh, have this uh, infection or they are just located on the body parts uh, and then they go inside through the injuries or they start growing by taking nutrition and that's how they grow sometimes they can be uh, non painful but sometimes they can be severely painful so that is the platy helminthes or flat worm category which the common example that you would know is tape worm uh i hope i can move forward next phylum within kingdom animalia is nematoda and nematoda is round worms the earlier one was the flat worm the next category is round worm so again uh, the common uh, examples are these ascaris and wisheria uh, these are uh, again not so common I mean, they are commonly found around us but we don't see observe them so commonly because obviously they need uh, like uh, very careful observation of the surround very uh, peculiar characteristic of the cylindrical body bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic so same categories the only difference between uh, nematoda and uh, the platy helminthes is like majorly these are platy helminthes are flat worms and the nematoda are round worms most of the other uh, characteristic remain same they have pseudocilum pseudocilum as in again not true uh, body cavity within their uh, whole of the body system they can be parasitic and they can cause diseases like elephantiasis uh, that means like a growing like an elephant so there is something uh, this is called as elephant foot right that means in that case the uh, foot will literally grow like a very huge and that's why it is called as elephant foot so something like this when the infection happens it's called elephantiasis ascariasis is specific infection by the uh, this ascaris species so if you look at this uh, kind of green background picture that is the ascaris uh, species and uh, you can also see some uh, parts of the uh, internal body structure now i don't know which one is head most likely this one looks like uh, the head and this one looks like the tail uh, so they can be of uh, different uh, this is the wisteria species uh, it's again i don't know how to explain it more than Uh, the body color and stuff like that but it is an example of the round worm like of course we can go into the detail structure like if i show you quickly again uh, the ascaris uh, body structure okay. images so you can see we can differentiate uh, these structures based on these many parameters so there are quite a few uh, like points that we can talk about but that is again not within the scope of this syllabus but if you clearly look they have well differentiated body parts like for example brain or the excretory pore or the sperms that means the reproductive structures or the testes and so on so that way they have fairly good uh, you know arrangement of these organs uh, within those round worms so that is the example uh, the ascaris and the wisheria uh, that is from the phylum nematoda uh, i assume that you have got clarity on this and i like i mentioned most of the characteristics they remain same between platy helminthes and nematoda <clears throat> uh, the next one which is again so could you go back to the slide for like yeah a few seconds thank you 3 2 1 i mean yeah 
okay done or yeah done now so the next one is uh, again a kind of round worm but it is segmented or it is ringed worm that means they have different segments within their body and it's also kind of round one so earthworm i'm assuming everyone would have seen for sure that is the phylum annelida annelida literally refers to the segmented or the round uh, worms this a double n i assume it stands for that annular uh, structure annular means a ring like structure so that's what is uh, annular uh, or the annelida category which is segmented ring worms again we have cylindrical body but it is segmented or it is separate a body is differentiated into head and tail part uh, very distinctly uh, uh, differentiated bilaterally symmetrical again they can be distributed into right and left or two sides triploblastic that means they are developed from the three germ layers they have true body cavity so from here again the complexity has increased to one another level that is true body cavity uh, that means they have internally uh, certain uh, body cavities which can be utilized like like we also have stomach uh, or lungs these are true body cavities right similarly these annelida they also have certain body cavities habitat uh, they can be close to the uh, water bodies that is either marine or fresh water or they can even survive on the land and the examples are the earthworm and leech which are the typical examples of this annelida uh, category again leech is another common example you people might have seen or experienced or at least heard of that is from the phylum annelida and then obviously this nereis is another type uh, which is uh, kind of segmented body with this uh, hair like uh, structure on it it's also uh, example of the king phylum annelida any question anyone okay <clears throat> then now the interesting categories will start for these ones that we see quite often next phylum uh, is the phylum arthropoda arthro usually refers to the joint like arthritis you know that word for sure which is in yeah. of joints so arthro huh? yeah kuch bhi so arthro refers to the joint and poda is not the tamil word poda but it's like uh, english word which refers to pods pods means limbs right so arthropoda that means jointed legs or uh, completely joined legs with each other so yes. poda means so uh, like poda means a uh, exoskeleton right uh not exoskeleton it actually refers to uh what we call uh, as the pod so like it's like bipod tripod tetrapod right that way so that that poda is coming from there which literally refers to the uh limbs so uh, the animals which have joint appendages belong uh, to this phylum of arthropoda this is the largest phylum amongst all the uh, animal kingdom this is the largest phylum because the number of uh, organisms which are included in arthropoda is huge the features include again bilateral symmetry they have joint appendages appendages means the uh, legs or whatever structures they have exoskeleton and the segmented body now all of the categories above uh, annelida will have segmented bodies right so that is the joint appendages exoskeleton exoskeleton is typical characteristic of most of these uh, category uh, because they need to protect especially during the young stages and they have segmented body that is well differentiated body <clears throat> and also they have well differentiated organ and organ system that is uh, again a very uh, miscomparatively complex system 
than the previous phylum. They have open circulatory system. This we again know uh, because they don't have completely developed circulatory system like how we have closed ones in terms of blood vessels and so on. So rather their blood flows through the body cavities. Uh, and that's why it is open circulatory system. They have a kind of heart as well, but it is hardly two chambered also, uh, which is like just kind of a pipe like structure. It will keep on pushing the blood and it will let it flow through the body cavity. Again, it will come back to that uh, heart like structure. Yes, Yajnesh or who is First of all, uh, these <coughs> exoskeletons will be heavy, right? So almost half of their weight will be that. Uh, right. Not necessarily, not always. Exoskeleton, they are just hard uh, skeleton present on uh, on their outermost surface. But they need not be always heavy. So, most of them have so thin legs. So, wouldn't, be, wouldn't it be hard to like, walk? Like, if you see evolution, like, in evolution, they should have developed, like, bigger legs, right? Uh, sorry, in evolution? They should have developed bigger legs. Why? To go faster. No, but why they have to go faster? Means why is that assumption? Uh, to protect themselves from predators. But that is why they have exoskeleton, no? They, they don't need all the mechanisms always that like having a uh, faster speed and exoskeleton that need not be the case right and and i'm sure some of these species they have evolved uh, from this for example that porcupine i guess uh, it it could be the closest ancestor of those uh, would be uh, or could be this orthopoda category but again that's just an assumption uh, i'm not too sure of it <coughs> Okay, so uh, they have open circulatory system and the common examples that you can see even in the figure, spiders, butterflies, mosquitoes or scorpions and so on, right, crab. So there are quite a few examples of this that you can write from this phylum orthopod. <clears throat> uh, anyone else has any question? Anyone wants to ask? I hope these uh, phylums, they are clear uh, to you. Okay, so then I will move forward. Then next one is phylum mollusca. So mollusk is something like soft, right? That means a soft uh, body. So these uh, phylum mollusca, this is again uh, another large group of animals uh, which are bilaterally symmetrical. So they can be distinguished into two halves. Uh, tripo, uh, triploblastic and that means they are again having three germ layers. They have less segmented body. Uh, at, uh, again, this kingdom, uh, uh, not this kingdom, this phylum is coming not actually in sequence. I should have put it earlier. Uh, that's when this complexity, you might feel, okay, less segmented body, that means they are again going back. This is not as per the evolutionary sequence. That are, these are as per the, uh, the sequence of the conventional uh, attributes that are given to these individual phylums. That means their characteristics. So that's when uh, this less segmented body may not fit into that increasing complexity order. <clears throat> uh, again, uh, you would know of the snails and slug, slugs uh, type of organism. They, you know that they don't have very well segmented body. Well developed organ and organ system. Uh, they have relatively fair uh, organs, uh, separate organs. And that is where I said, though they may not have segmented body, but they have well-developed organ and organ sy system. So as per that complexity, it is uh, surely fitting in this context, but then at this point, uh, it doesn't. Typically, open circulatory system, uh, because again, these uh, they don't have very well-developed circulatory system. So it is mostly open. So the blood flows through the open cavities. Limbs are present. Uh, limbs, uh, they can be visible or they uh, like, uh, there are very, uh, like for example, octopus, very clearly visible limbs. But snails, uh, they may not be clearly visible to like in general. So all these 
uh, are the examples of the phylum mollusca which are more like very soft bodied animal that is what is mollusca any question anyone i hope you are able to follow all these uh, phylums it should not happen that we are just rushing through uh, but i hope you are getting at least a bit of it yes prakriti sir how do the how does a clam fall into this category because it's since it's soft bodied ha huh? clam is not soft uh see not literally it means that it has to be soft bodied see there will be always exception uh, but based on so for example clam structure or the inside of the clam maybe the inside but correct uh like we don't talk of this exoskeleton always in in the category so uh, like i had also told you last time uh when we classify these organisms it did not perfectly fit within that category right it can be a little uh, additional characteristic that particular organism might have and but then on larger level they might fit into that category and the sub category can be a separate group altogether so that is something like what we just pointed out okay <clears throat> okay so the next is the phylum echinodermata now this echinodermata is coming from the word which is echinos which means hedgehog uh, which is like a, a kind of spiny or zigzag not zigzag as such but yeah kind of up and down that is hedgehog and derma means skin so this echinoderms they have they are spiny skinned animals right and the common examples that we would know is starfish or the sea cucumber the last uh, uh, organism is the sea cucumber because it's like looks like cucumber <coughs> non edible though and it has spiny skin and this star starfish is there uh, as an example of this echinoderm the very special char uh, characteristic of this uh, is the radial symmetry that means they cannot be uh bilaterally symmetrical this is like a circle and this uh, along the radius they can be segregated into uh, many parts so that's what is radial uh, symmetry of this organism and they are again triploblastic that means they are developed from three germ layers <clears throat> they have true cilium that is the true body cavity uh have hard calcium carbonate skeleton structures on the outskirts Uh, or not outskirts on the outer part of their body they have this hard calcium carbonate uh, skeleton these are mostly free living marine animals uh, and the example sea urchin that is the middle example starfish you would know and sea cucumber the last picture so that is phylum echinodermata main characteristic radial symmetry and uh, these are marine triploblastic sir all such cucumber are not If you grow the regular cucumber in sea, it is edible. Are you sure? No, uh, not all. See, because these are spiny animals. Until and unless you are able to remove that. Uh, uh, yeah. But some of them can be poisonous. Again, as you said. Yeah. Uh, most of the times. It. so there are few organisms which is made up of uh, other uh, minerals as well but most of the uh, organisms including your uh, crab and scorpion and stuff like that, it is made up of calcium carbonate <clears throat> so that is the phylum echinodermata like i mentioned the main characteristic being the radial symmetry and the spiny skin uh, animal uh the last phylum is the chordata uh chordata refer literally refers to the presence of notochord uh so they are bilaterally symmetrical again triploblastic with an organ system level of classification that means they are of very high 
a complex, highly complex organism compared to all the previous phylum that we had seen. They possess a notochord. So notochord is actually a structure. Uh, so again, when these uh, embryo development happens, these three different germ layers, they will roll out a bit and they will form a hollow cavity like structure. And that hollow cavity like structure is called as notochord, which later on develops into the backbone. Backbone as in the vertebral column and also into the nerve cord. So that is what is the notochord structure. And all those organisms which develop with the notochord, uh, notochord that they are, they fall into this phylum chordate. Their circulatory system is closed type. So all the previous organisms, they had open circulatory system. This one has closed circulatory system. And we know what closed circulatory system is. That means the blood does not flow into the open body cavity. Rather, it flows through the blood vessels. And the examples are all of these. Uh, <clears throat> the main subclasses of the phylum chordata, they are these five. Rather, these are the classes of uh, vertebrate uh, system. So within phylum chordata, there is vertebrata. And within vertebrata class, there are these uh, subcategories, Pisces, fish, amphibia, amphibians, reptilia, uh, reptiles, aves means birds, mammalia means mammals. And uh, I assume that I don't have to tell you what are the characteristics of fish and amphibians and reptiles and birds and mammals. Uh, you don't know, you come to my class tomorrow. Okay. If you need help in these, but uh, of course textbooks uh, give you quite a good amount of information, basic information, or you can generally also write few characteristics, which uh, will be good enough for you to understand what these categories are. Uh, so the last slide I will talk about, which is extra I have clearly written, which is not within the syllabus, but I thought it is important that we should know this. Uh, names might be little uh, gibberish, uh, but still, if we know them, it will be good. So there are uh, within vertebrata category, that means those organism which has vertebral column, they are distinguished into two. That is uh, agnatha and gnathostomata, right? So these are the two categories. So these agnathas, these are a separate category with cyclostomata, which are primitive vertebrates. Primitive as in very early uh, like the earlier species within the vertebrate and they have large jawless sucking mouth. Jawless as in they did not have very well developed jaws. So they usually had a structure which used to suck the food uh, from the mouth structure. So that is this uh, agnatha category. And then gnathostomata, these were especially the jawed vertebrate. That means they had well developed jaw structures. And then we all of us, we fall into that nathostomata. Within nathostomata, again, there were fishes, uh, sorry, the uh, Pisces, which is the category of the fish and the tetrapoda. So again, in the Pisces, there is something called as jawed fish uh, with uh, paired fins, paired nostrils and so on, scales. So all these characteristics will be there. And there were these specific subclasses, which include the sharks and the ghost sharks. Ghost sharks, again, I'm assuming, uh, you would know what they are. They look like shark, uh, but they have totally a uh, snout like face, uh, not face, the mouth. That is a very typical characteristic of the ghost shark. And uh, so these are the uh, different uh, two uh, or two types of this fish category. And uh, this ostike, ostike thighs, this another category of the fish, these are all your bony fishes that you know. And this uh, chondric thighs, these are cartilaginous uh, material as their skeleton, while the ostite thighs, they have bony uh, material as their skeleton. And the rest four category within the tetrapoda, that is four limbed uh, organism. So all of these, they have four limbs uh, and that is why uh, they are uh, in separate category. So that's it from my side. I guess I will stop here. If you have any questions, you can ask. Uh, with this, we have kind of finished the whole chapter. 
but yeah if at all i guess uh, in the next class we will keep it a little quiz uh, like uh, thing so i will show you a picture and then we need to classify that organism so that way we will have better idea in terms of characteristics uh, and then we can go on from there uh, maybe just for the next class and then this will be the second last class right uh, do you have 